Sorry for being a minute late. Okay, the recording is just started. Okay, fine. Okay, good morning, everyone. Welcome. Let's take a moment just to pray together, and then we will start. Can I uh, uh, just request somebody to pray together with us, and then we get started, please. Uh, loving Father, we just come into your presence, Father God. Thank you for this wonderful morning. As we gather here uh, for the class of Lord Jesus, uh, you guide us and hear us, Father God. Keep us away from all the distractions of Father God Jesus. We praise you, we all in, in Jesus' name. We pray this prayer, of Father. God. Amen. Okay. Uh, welcome everybody to this class. Let me just drink a little water here. Um, to this class here on church and um, ministry administration. Uh, last week, uh, we talked about volunteer management. And uh, uh, today, um, we're going to just do a very simple class on communications. So I think um, we will spend just one lecture on that. And then we're going to get into our class on Friday. We'll get into talking about organizational culture. Uh, so that one we'll spend maybe uh, two lectures on that uh, this week, and we continue with continue with next week. So uh, communications. That's what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to go ahead and share the PDF. All right, um, Dave, you have a question? Uh, a small inquiry, Major. Before we move on to uh, in, uh, communication, yes. Uh, uh, just a small inquiry about how uh, APC is uh, handling with the, the, the volunteer recruit, recruitment, and uh, is there any kind of contract or any guideline for, for, for the volunteers that they uh, should or should not do and don't? Uh, or is there anything that uh, the volunteers should know um, what mm. their lifestyle should be or conduct in the, the, the way they live? Yes. So, good question. Thank you. So, um, in terms of uh, uh, enlisting volunteers, um, like we do different things, you know, one is, of course, we announce periodically in our Sunday announcements, the video saying we need volunteers for, for various things, uh, various areas of uh, involvement. So that announcements happen. Uh, we also uh, have a sign up sheet in our church website. Maybe I can just show you uh, this quickly. Um, so we also, you know, uh, in our church website, if you go um, right here, you know, they can come and they can sign up here, volunteer. They go here and uh, they, they can see this page. They can sign up. Uh, they can just put in their details, which location they want to serve, where they want to serve, and sign up. So this email comes. And immediately, when somebody signs up, uh, they'll get a call, and they, you know, they'll be assigned to uh, a particular team or the teams that they showed interest in. So this is another way we do it. Um, from time, uh, then, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we also have a welcome banquet. That means when new people come, uh, every three months we invite them for a lunch, and then uh, during that time also we will you know, talk about volunteering and we give them a sign up sheet similar to this so they can sign up. And also personally, you know, where different people contact different people saying, hey, would you like to help? So that is, I think that would probably be the most important way when we personally ask somebody, can you help, you know, an info desk or in any of these areas, uh, people sign up. Uh, then we also have, and it's listed here, the staff and volunteer guidelines. So we have this document that we share with people from time to time, uh, where we tell them, you know, uh, these are all our, these are the guidelines if you want to volunteer. Now this is a little strict, 
uh, of course it's not been updated for a while but it's quite uh, quite uh, strict you know so we tell them here's your personal life example your spiritual life your code of conduct uh, all of those things uh, you know uh, uh, how you in the state uh, the agreement with statement of faith you should respect the church community um, you know you respect your delegated leaders and these are the attitudes you have as a volunteer and uh, your community your commitment you know to being a one heart one mind so uh, uh, this uh, this is our you know standard uh, document we have you know it, it covers everything we haven't updated it in a while because it, it pretty much covers uh, all that we want to tell volunteers before they start uh, uh, serving so from time to time uh, we take our volunteers through this document which is our guidelines for staff and volunteers in terms of them serving and of course we have to keep reminding them because people will tend to forget so i think it's a good thing to do this once every year that we uh, and now that we are resuming you know in person services i think uh, we should do this once again with all the people once they come back right now we have very few people who are you know going to be involved but that uh, that that's what we do yeah, so I uh, hope this, uh, does this answer your question, Dave? Uh, yes, Pastor, pretty much. Yeah. So uh, one more inquiry. Mm -hmm. so if, if somehow, uh, some, 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 somehow somebody uh, didn't go through the, the guideline, and, I mean, he went against the guideline, and uh, you have to dismiss the volunteer. Uh, so what is the best way to do that? Mm. So, you know, um, uh, we do like, uh, you know, it's like a, um, uh, so, you know, uh, we give at least two chances um, to people. So, you know, if they do something that is against this, you know, what we have requested here in this volunteer guidelines document, uh, you know, if they go against it, uh, do something that's not correct, you know, so, uh, you know, we say, hey, first warning, like, you know, just say, you know, please, this is what we require. Uh, we want you to follow this guideline and, uh, uh, and uh, please, uh, you know, do so one warning, second time, second warning, third time, we have to say, hey, uh, you know, in, in a nice way, sorry, you're not, uh, you know, you're not meeting our requirement here. So we would, ask you to please uh, uh, step away from being a volunteer you know you could serve i mean you can just you're welcome to attend church but uh, as a volunteer we can't you know so for example if uh, if uh, they you know they've been rostered and they don't show up uh, and they don't tell anybody that they're not coming so you know first time you tell them hey you should at least you should inform so somebody else can come in your place uh, they repeat the same thing second time. So again, second is, hey, if you're not coming, you know, you should tell somebody so that uh, we can do this. Uh, and then if they, if they do it again, third time, then we have to say, look, this is repeating and we don't know how, long, how many times it's going to repeat. So maybe it's best you don't volunteer. We'll find somebody else. So we have to talk to them lovingly and release them from being volunteer. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's clear enough. Yeah, so we do take action. Now, if somebody's done something straight away that's very serious, then, of course, immediately we have to tell them, you know, uh, please, we want you to step, sit down, step down. But if it's something smaller, we can, you know, give them two chances and then uh, let them go. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Good. Go ahead, Dave. Uh, uh, is it okay for us to use your guideline if it is guideline in, in our church or in our community? Uh, yeah, sure, sure, oh. sure. Okay. So, so you know, if you go to uh, like, okay, this is our guidelines document. So, if you go to apcwo.org/slash lines you'll find all our documents there all it's available it's just that we, have, we haven't you know so we have all these guidelines for different areas 
like book table, child protection policy, different areas. Um, we have all these guidelines available. Uh, and uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, among them is the volunteer team guidelines, um, uh, staff and volunteer. Guide. That This is the document I showed you, staff and volunteer. Guide. This, this applies to all staff and volunteers. That's the thing that we have to go with everybody every year. But there are team specific guidelines. Uh, there are training documents uh, that we can use to train people. Uh, there are role descriptions that are for different people who are serving in church. So you're welcome to take any of these or all of these and modify it, use it. You're welcome. So that's one reason why we put it out here, uh, because uh, one is for our own benefit that we can always tell people, you know, go here and read the document, but also to share with others. So. Uh, when usually when pastors and all talk to me and they say, hey, how do you do this? Then I just direct them here to this website, web page. And I say, you can just download it and you can use it. So uh, please feel free. Uh, we'll be happy if you use it, modify it, change it, and how you want to suit uh, what you're doing and you can use it. Yeah, thank you, Pastor. Yeah? Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. So today, like we said, we're going to talk about uh, communications um uh, it's it's a very small lecture it's not nothing very complicated uh, most of us are uh, are already uh, maybe already aware of these things but i, I do, i'm doing it more for the sake of uh, completeness and also maybe uh there might be a few thoughts that uh, that we could take away um you know so we understand you know that in any uh, organization Communications is very important, communicating with all the people who are part of the organization. So as a church and as a ministry, there are two directions in communications. One is you're communicating within your own people who are working for the organization, whether they are staff or uh, volunteers. So you're communicating with them. But you also have to communicate with the congregation, with the larger audience. So that means... Uh, uh, as a church, you know, you have a congregation, several hundred people, sometimes several thousand people. So you have to communicate with them. Or if you're a ministry, you may need to communicate with people who are your partners, your donors, and so on. Uh, uh, the focus on, on this chapter, of course, is uh, internal communications. That means communicating with your own team members, your staff or volunteers, people who are serving in the organization. That's the focus of this uh, the lecture today. But uh, many of these things also uh, are relevant when you're communicating to the larger crowd, I mean, the congregation or your donors and so on, right? So so uh, uh, most, of, most of what I'm saying is more uh, in a, from an internal point of view as an organization, right? So uh, why is uh, open communication so important? And, and, and these are things we already know, but you know, just for the sake of reminding us, you know, uh, uh, why is communication, internal communication, communication with your staff and volunteers, why is that important? Well, it it, it enthuses people about, you know, the, the job or the role they have. You know, if people feel um, excited or, uh, in, of course, they feel informed, but uh, they feel that, look, I have a great place that, that, that speaks to me, that, you know, that keeps me informed of what's happening. It makes, uh, it gives people a feeling like, you know, this is a great place to work because they are telling me what's going on, or what's happening. Uh, and uh, rather than feeling, uh, you know, I, I don't know what's happening, right? So part of just making people feel that, they, you know, feel good about the organization, the enthusiasm about the organization really helps in that. Uh, so of course, secondly, uh, it makes people connected, feel uh, they know what's going on. Uh, so they don't feel uninformed, like, oh, I don't know what's going on. You know, when people don't know what's going on, they feel disconnected. They feel out of sync. Uh, but when they are informed, you know, when, when the goal and direction, what's happening is communicated, people feel like, hey, I know what's going on and I am, I am part of this whole thing. You know, I'm connected to it so I can flow with it. So that's a very important uh, piece there of communication. That is, if you want people in the organization to feel like, hey, I, I know what's going on, I'm going with this, I'm flowing with it, you know, we need to communicate, we need to share with people what's happening, right? Uh, 
Also, number three is uh, they feel uh, ownership of the direction we are taking. So it's not, you know, it's not just, okay, you know, uh, somebody on top made some decisions and they're going on, going ahead with them on their own, but everybody's going and everybody's like ownership of that decision or direction, right? So we're all taking responsibility. We are all going to put our efforts towards uh, the decision that has been made, towards the direction. We are all responsible. So there's a sense of ownership uh, towards uh, where the organization is going, the decision that's been made. Um, there is also alignment. That means uh, in the other decisions that are therefore made, in the other actions that are therefore taken by people, they will stay aligned to what has been communicated. If you don't tell them, then they may make decisions sometimes that may be exactly opposite to what uh, you know the direction and the decision that uh, the organization is going. It's not their fault. They didn't do it intentionally. It is just that they were not informed. So that's why they decided to do something different, right? So in order to keep everybody aligned, uh, we need to communicate. It also shows that we care about the people. We care about their place and role in the organization. They uh, that uh, you know, look, you are important to us. You need to know these things. You know, we care about them. Uh, people just just basic information. You know, just inform. Hey, this is what's happening. This is the latest update. This is the news. Uh, there, are, this is uh, the result of uh, what has happened. This is the progress we've made. This is where we are. Like just just basic information is another aspect, and also people feel inspired. You know, when you share with them a success, when you share with them a good outcome, when you share with them something that has happened. You know, they feel inspired by it, uh, and that's a great way to keep people in the organization motivated uh, uh, in their work. So, you know, these are just a few, but uh, important uh, results, outcomes of good communication. If you're keeping people in the organization informed, uh, here are the benefits that we can have, right? Now, uh, and, you know, there's a lot that can be said about communication, but I'm just highlighting some of the important parts. Uh, it's important to keep to look at communication as a dialogue rather than a monologue. Uh, meaning, communication is not a one-way thing, right? It's not just somebody telling people here, "This is what you have to do." This is here's information. Just read it. You know, it's not just a one-way thing. It's a dialogue, uh, and the more opportunities for dialogue, uh, the more you know healthy the organization will be. Right. That means uh, you want people to be part of uh, the decisions that are made, uh, you know, um, uh, of what is happening and so on. So, uh, of course, uh, you know, depending on the size of the organization, uh, you know, the, the the how things are done can be different. But there has to be the uh, opportunity for interaction, for discussion, for sharing of ideas, for solving problems together, for making decisions together. All right. Uh, one of the best ways uh, is just to, you know, have have a group meeting. Right. So, of course, uh, you know, there are different teams. So teams can have meetings uh, for things that they are involved in. So, you know, very often we, I call the IT team together, you know, happens almost every week and we all get on a call and uh, we talk and we discuss. And, uh, you know, this is what's happening now. Yeah. So so the whole team knows, OK, this is what we're doing. This is where we're going, etc. cetera. Uh, and then from time to time, we call all the staff together. Now, we are not that big a staff uh, group. Uh, so it's easy to get everybody together, especially these days. We can all get on a call and then uh, discuss. You know, everybody is welcome to speak. Everybody's welcome to share their ideas. But then uh, that is very important because uh, it's not like, okay, one, one person or a few people are making decisions and everybody has to go with it. But rather, we put things out in public. You know, hey, any ideas, any thoughts? Uh, we can, you know, we can uh, discuss, we can look at the pros and cons, we can uh, work out what is good and uh, leave out what is, you know, not very useful. So uh, that kind of a platform or an opportunity for people to communicate, uh, people to share ideas actually builds 
uh, not only do we get good uh, outcomes, not only does it keep people informed automatically because they were all there in the meeting, they know what was decided, but uh, it also creates a very healthy environment because what we do in that group meeting, big staff meeting or town, house, town hall meeting, people will replicate when they have their own smaller team meetings. So they will know that when you have a team meeting, it's all about one person making a decision, but it's about let's sit down and talk and let's discuss, let's throw around ideas and, and you know, let's go for the best ideas regardless of who gave it. So they will replicate that same thing. And, and so that improves communication uh, between team members at all levels. Right. So, uh, 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 you know, this dialogue, uh, opportunities for dialogue, op platforms for discussion, interaction is very important. And actually, it's very simple. It's just everybody getting together and talking about something that needs to be decided or planned or things like that. You know, so you do it at a big level. Well, you know, all the staff together, you do it at all the team levels and Team members get together and have discussions uh, to make decisions. So that's the that's the that's a great way having dialogue, uh, a great way to strengthen communication uh, at all levels uh, within the organization. Of course, uh, all communication must be open, honest, and direct. Right? Uh, there's no point in communicating untruths or things that are not uh, uh, honest. So whatever we say, you know, it has to be facts. It has to be factual uh, so that people can trust. This is very important. You know, on Friday, we'll start talking about culture. How can you create trust? See, trust Initially, people trust implicitly. That means, you know, they give us, we all trust each other implicitly. That means we say, okay, and I, I'm taking, I'm, I'm trusting that person. So people are going to trust the organization implicitly in the beginning. But if they find that the organization, the people are not open and honest and direct, you know what happened? They will lose trust. It affects the culture. Yeah, that means everything we say becomes susceptible. Uh, and people are, are questionable. Are they really telling us the truth? So we need to maintain this. It's got to be a long-term commitment. It's got to be something ongoing if you want to create a culture of trust. So beginning, everybody gives trust as a gift implicitly we trust people but then uh, as an organization we need to make keep it we need to create a culture we need to basically earn and maintain the trust of our staff and the best way to do it uh, and the only way i would say to do it is to be open honest and direct over time right you know so when we communicate to people we uh share things okay this is good things this we made a mistake you know, there have been times when uh, i've made a mis i made mistakes i'll send i send an email to everybody in the office hey guys sorry I, I i i did this i did that i'm sorry i made a mistake so everybody knows hey uh, if if the pastor can be open about his mistake they can also be open about their mistakes there's nothing wrong to openly admit your mistake it doesn't change your value a single bit uh, in fact, when we are open and honest about what our failures, our mistakes, it just, you know, it creates that culture where everybody can be open. But uh, we do that over, you know, over time, we keep that, this is what it is, and it builds a culture of uh, openness, honesty, and being direct about what we want to do. Uh, and so we need to be direct. That means say what you mean and mean what you say. Uh, don't beat around the bush, so to speak, meaning just say it straight. Uh, and don't assume people can read your mind. People cannot. So you need to write what you're thinking and state it clearly. So these are some basic things. You know, it has to be open. It has to be honest. It has to be direct. Then it really builds a good uh, culture in the organization.
Um, some things about you know the congregation. So for us as a church, we have our internal staff. So everything I said earlier was from that perspective, uh, communicating with our staff and volunteers. Uh, but we also have to communicate with the congregation, the, the, the people, or an organization may have to communicate with its donors, a Christian organization. So this has to be regular, you know, so people feel, yeah, they, they are in touch with us, but don't overdo it, you know. Uh, if they get, you know, five, six emails uh, a week, uh, it'll be a nuisance, you know, they'll get upset. So uh, from time to time, you know, and then you're giving them the option if they want it or they don't want it. So, uh, of course, these days with the tools we have and later on, uh, you know, in another chapter, we will talk about technology and uh, we'll be doing a full course on technology in ministry uh, next semester. Uh, uh, we have these tools, you know, we have a mail list service that you could use and uh, you can maintain your mailing lists and different kinds of groups of mailing lists so you can target your communication. So if you want emails to go to a certain group, you send it to them. If you want emails to go to multiple groups, you can send it to those multiple groups. So, uh, and then you give them the option to unsubscribe if they don't want it. But, uh, so we need to communicate with the congregation, keep them informed. Um, so one simple thing that we do is we send, um, every week we send an email with the sermon, right? Now, of course, people can unsubscribe to it if they don't want it, but at a very basic level, uh, we're saying, hey, here's a sermon, here are the sermon notes, and this is what it is. And if, especially if somebody doesn't come to church, missed church on a certain Sunday, uh, at least they will know, okay, this was a sermon topic and this was what was preached in church. And if they want to go listen, they can just click and go and listen to the message. It's a very simple thing, right? Now, so we've been doing it for many years and uh, just to keep the congregation informed. Uh, it's of course an automated thing. It's not personal as such, but it's just a connect that's happening between the church and the congregation with that one email. Uh, that has uh, information about the sermon. And in that email, we may include any special announcements for that week or month that needs to be done, right? Now, if people don't want to receive that, they can always opt out. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, usually people will say, I didn't get the weekly sermon, what happened? You know, if, if it doesn't go out on time, uh, I've had uh, people ask, well, what happened to that email? I, you know, so it seems like people just want to give, whether they actually open it and read it, I don't know, but uh, uh, you know, it's, it's there, they feel connected that, okay. Uh, uh, but a very important part of this communication with the congregation is a little, is a passive communication, which is the website, meaning uh, it's there and they can use it when they want it. So it's a passive thing, but we keep, you know, it's important to keep it updated and so all, it's always current, is updated almost every, not almost, but it is updated every day uh, with the latest things, changes. Uh, there's a daily devotional that goes on, weekly sermons, uh, uh, content. And all. so the website uh, is a means to communicate with the, the larger group, your congregation or donors or, you know, people outside. Uh, it's a passive thing, meaning they have to come to it to get information, but the important thing is information should be there and information should be updated there. So for example, you know, uh, I remember once uh, somebody wanted to invite a friend to church, uh, and but they wanted to know who's going to be preaching on Sunday because they wanted to invite them so that they can come and hear the pastor preaching, right? So they need, they want to know who's preaching on Sunday. So we have uh, you know, a pulpit calendar that's put out on the church website. Uh, and, and and this is done just to let people know who's preaching where on Sunday. Now, of course, uh, after this whole uh, lockdown thing happened, that's, uh, you know, it's it's not very relevant because everything's now online, pre-recorded and so on. But uh, when we're having in-person services, people want to know who's preaching in which location. Uh, if they're inviting a friend, um, they would prefer, I mean, if they want to, they would prefer this friend to come, maybe hear the pastor, not a guest speaker, 
those kinds of things. So they will go to the website and the one say, okay, who's preaching? Okay, oh, fine. I can invite my friend and so that they can listen to the pastor and so on. Or if there's a guest speaker, whatever. So just a simple thing, but you know, uh, this has happened. Congregation would want to know who's preaching where and so on and, and, and our different locations. So this is helpful and it's just, it's there and those who want it will come and look it up and use it to make their decisions and so on. So uh, uh, the, the, the website is a very important tool um, that uh, churches and organizations can use. And of course, we, you can use it for a lot of other things like registering for events, uh, which again is a very important thing. Okay. So uh, he, uh, just some practical things here in, in, in uh, communication. You know, uh, we need to be clear what we're communicating and to whom we're communicating, right? Uh, uh, you know, a, a poorly written email or communication is a disaster. Yeah, it's better that it's not sent than being sent. So, uh, you know, so just some basic thing, and I, I'm sorry for uh, stating it, but, you know, our communication should be clear. Uh, there should be no spelling mistakes, no grammar mistakes. Uh, you know these things are unacceptable from an organization from an organization perspective so uh, and nowadays we have tools to help us you know uh, uh, a simple tool is grammarly you can put it on uh, to your uh, to your web uh, thing where you're using you can check your grammar or uh, if you're using a word document automatically the word document has grammar tools english spelling and grammar checkers uh, so make use of it uh, send you know a, a, an email or a, anything a communication that has spelling and grammar mistakes is not acceptable. Uh, another important thing is to keep things very concise. You know, today we are living in a day and time when people are used to SMSs and WhatsApp, meaning it's very short messages. So if our emails, you know, you, it, it may be wonderfully written, but if it's too long, nobody's going to read it. So always when we're communicating, you say, how can I say everything I want to say in the fewest words that I can use? That's the goal, right? If you can say it in one sentence, say it in one sentence. You don't have to put more than what is needed. Right? So try to keep communications to be very precise and concise. Why? Because we're living in that kind of a time. We're living in that kind of a generation for whatever reason, uh, people have so many things, so many things to read. And so they will give few seconds to read an email or uh, read a message. So uh, when we're sending emails, especially, uh, our goal must be keep it precise, keep it concise. Nothing more, not one word more than what is needed because uh, people... Uh, you know, are just in, in that mindset, you know, they, they don't want to read long emails and things like that. Um, wherever possible, you know, uh, uh, in our communications, and again, this is more from an internal perspective, try to meet people face to face, um, wherever possible, because then it's not just the words you get to see their, uh, the nonverbal part of the communication, their expressions, actions, uh, and you also get a sense of their emotions. Uh, things that, you know, these things cannot be picked up in written communication. So wherever possible, try to keep it in person, face to face. Uh, uh, and uh, today we do have the benefit of technology where you can actually see people, even though you may be physically in different places. So that does make things so much better because at least you can see them, you can see, uh, uh, the, some of the nonverbal parts of their communication. So we can you know, reduce time, make uh, other costs by using these tools and uh, technologies that are available, right? So uh, make, make, make use of those things uh, today, right? So th uh, that's it, you know, uh, just uh, a very short lesson here on communications, but uh, it is very, very uh, important in terms of uh, taking care of the people within the organization, keep, keeping them excited about the work, feeling connected, sense of ownership, staying aligned, 
feeling cared, feeling informed, and feeling inspired. All this happens through good communication. Uh, important to keep communications as far as possible as a dialogue rather than a monologue, where uh, you know people have the opportunity to share their ideas, participate in the decision making, participate in problem solving. Uh, so keep that, provide opportunities for that. Uh, another important part is to keep things open, honest, and direct, because that's going to create a culture of trust. And they're going to repeat it. You know, if they see it happen from the leadership, they are going to repeat it in every level. Um, uh, we also have to think about communicating with the larger congregation. There can be active communication that's happening. Uh, keep it regular, but don't overdo it. Uh, and there's a passive communication where uh, you're making information available through the websites, our website and portal, so people come and take it from there when, as and when they need it. And some practical tips here of, uh, you know, when you're communicating, there has to be, it's got to be clear, it's got to be well written, etc. Keep it very concise and precise because people don't actually will not read long emails. And try to have face to face communication whenever possible. Uh, with, and we can take advantage of tools and technologies. Okay, so just a little uh, note there on uh, communications. I want to ask if there are any uh, questions, any thoughts on this. Uh, uh, I will share with you later on some tools that can be used. Uh, um, you can set up uh, your mailing lists. WhatsApp groups, all those things. So some of us are already familiar with that, but we'll mention it later on tools that can be used. Um, any questions, any thoughts, any points to discuss? OK. All right, so I think. Um, uh, this is a pretty simple lesson. Uh, most of us are already familiar with these things and probably already doing it. Um, so what we'll do on Friday, uh, we'll get into the next chapter, which is on culture, organizational culture. Uh, this is a very important aspect of uh, administration, uh, of running the organization, creating a good culture, because it affects uh, just the workplace environment, it also affects performance, and it uh, eventually affects outcomes. You know, uh, for the organization as a whole, uh, uh, the culture that you have. If you have a good, healthy culture, uh, things are good. Things are very positive. If the culture is hostile, toxic, uh, difficult, then people don't like it. They may not stay, and the organization will struggle in trying to pursue its uh, goals. So it's a very important part. Uh, we'll pick it up on Friday, OK? Um, let's wrap up. Let's close in prayer. And then we will dismiss. Can I just request somebody uh, to pray with us? And then we will dismiss. Anybody? All right, nobody's volunteering to pray. All right, uh, let me ask Prince. Prince, would you close in prayer, please? Thank you, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, just come before. Lord, thank you. You help us, Lord, to learn from your word, Lord, that communication should be open and our Lord, thank you, and help us to more and more that we could learn and use it, your kingdom, Lord. Thank you, and I submit all the day all in your hand, Lord. Just I pray in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Prince. Okay, everyone, thank you for joining the class, and we will uh, see you on Thursday, uh, Friday, sorry, uh, as we talk about the next part. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the day. Bye now. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, sir. Thank you.